In this video, we will be going over controls mode, movement controls, and mechanization controls. At the very top, we have mouse aim, simplified controls, realistic controls, and full reel controls. The differences between these are mouse aim is when you basically tell the game to fly for you by pointing where you want the instructor to fly. This mode also has a unique feature in that you can aim the guns of the helicopter outside the gunner and HEGM view. You can also still lock on to targets, although you can lock on to targets not in mouse view. It's just a lot easier to do it in mouse view. Simplified controls is like mouse aim except it removes the pointer. You still have the instructor but you are now having to fly by adjusting all the axes, uh, which you can still do in mouse aim, but in simplified, that is your default. You are now mostly in charge of the flying. But you still have the instructor controlling things down here that you enable. With realistic controls, it's like simplified controls, except it removes the entire instructor tab that was in simplified and mouse aim. And lastly, you have full real controls. This is like realistic controls, except it removes auto trim, and it adds a bunch of new key bindings. For both helicopters and planes, it'll add a toggle SAS mode, and it'll add an entirely new section called trimming, which I will make a separate video on. For aircraft, it adds a bunch of engine controls, most of which are not that important. The only one you really need to worry about is Toggle Engine, and that is it. Howdy, Future Bruce here. If you find the videos taking too long, or if I'm talking too slow, you can set the YouTube playback speed to 2 times, or 1.5 times. And you should still be able to understand me, so I hope that helps. Next, we will take a look at Controls Mode. You will see that there are two drop-down menus when you are in mouse aim, but all the others only have one. The reason behind this, I'm not entirely sure, but when you're in mouse aim, this is how you select mouse aim as your primary, with this first box. The second one is the same as the first one, except it will affect the box in all of these, not just simulator mode, like it says there. As you can see, as you can see if I select none here, it'll be none through all of those. And if I select view there, it'll be view through all of those. So depending on how you want to fly is what you will want to set these to. Now if you don't want to fly in mouse aim, obviously you're not going to have mouse aim selected here. If you select mouse joystick, what this will do is it will put a little circle in the middle of your screen and there will be a little dot. That dot will be a uh, virtual representation of your HOTAS and the input that you would be inputting with the joystick. This is a good alternative for those who want to fly in sim but they don't have a HOTAS or a joystick of any kind. Then you have relative control. Unlike mouse joystick, what you're doing now is you're using the mouse to make slight adjustments. Instead of moving a dot in a circle to continuously input that amount of roll or pitch, you are instead moving... Um, you're instead pushing the joystick inch by inch where you want it. This is what I use because I don't use mouse joystick and I don't use mouse aiming. This allows me to still control my aircraft with the mouse um, if my hand is still on it. I transition from my HOTAS to my mouse a lot, so still being able to control it slightly with a mouse is helpful. And then lastly, you have view. This removes all movement that your mouse does, and it just reverts to looking around. So pick which one you want. All this box does is tell your mouse what you want it to do. You will also notice there are these tick boxes here. All these do is just tell you exactly which control scheme is what. If I turn off Virtual Instructor and Simplified Controls, it'll go to Realistic Controls. If I turn off Auto Trim, it'll switch to Full Real. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now you'll notice in Realistic 
simplified, and four wheel controls, there are different key bindings here that you can use. All of them have toggle controls mode. What this does is it will let you toggle between the different controls modes, like so. See there on the bottom left, I'm switching control types. So that is a pretty important key binding to have if you like to switch between different controls modes. If you're in mouse aim, you will have hover mode and manual roll control mode. Now, I don't use these key bindings. I can't really tell you exactly what they do, but I'm, I'm going to assume hover mode allows you to toggle hovering on and off. It'll lock your helicopter in 3D space, most likely. I know that it's not the same. Hovering is not the same on every helicopter, and I will explain uh, more detail later. But manual roll control mode, I actually have no clue what this does. So we're going to find out right now what this does. I have no clue. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me what that does. I don't use it, but those are two key bindings. There's also hover height for mouse aim and uh, simplified controls. I'm guessing that's for the instructor. You tell them how high you want to fly, uh, or how, 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 how high you want to hover, and that is how you do that. I believe this is an axie, so you can set a, a two buttons to it in man uh, by setting a maximum or a minimum value. You'll probably want to have it set to relative control, though. Um, I don't know for sure, but if you're using, if you want to have the instructor hover for you and change your hover height, that is what you can do. And simplified controls, again, you still have hover mode and hover height. Um, I don't believe you have anything else that mouse aim didn't have. Realistic is the same, it removes hovering and hover height, but full real controls adds the toggle SAS mode. Now, this is how you're going to cycle between auto trim, hovering, automatic leveling, and manual control. Not every helicopter has these features, and some feature, some helicopters, these features will work differently than others. So, for here, on the Apache, let me switch to full wheel controls. Now, it default will put you in manual control at the start of a match. Uh, so I'll just restart so you can see. And you can tell if you're in manual control if your helicopter is just kind of spinning around or wobbling around on its own. Now, uh, give me a second. Let me turn my foot cam on. So you'll notice to fly in manual control, you have to have quite a bit of. Um, we have to have quite a bit of control over the different axes, both the collective, the cyclic, which is the pitching and rolling for the um, joystick here and the counter torque pedals, which are my feet below. I'm kind of flying a little sloppy here. But you can see it's very difficult to do this with a controller or with just binary input, like on a keyboard. So you pretty much have to have a HOTAS, and I highly recommend pedals if you want to fly with full wheel controls on. Now, if you don't do that, but you still want to fly in sim, you can go to SAS mode, and you can press the toggle SAS mode button, and on the bottom left, you'll see it switches to damping. This is essentially auto trim, but um, I don't know how many differences there are between the War Thunder's auto trim and damping mode, but uh, that's the closest thing you can get to auto trim in simulator mode. You also have automatic leveling. What this does is it flattens your helicopter out. It's not a hover mode, but what it does is it makes it as parallel to the ground as possible. And lastly, you have a hover mode. Now this hover mode, um, for the Apache at least, it locks it in 3D space, both the X, Y, and Z axis. But for some helicopters, it doesn't. And I'll try to show you that right now. So here we have an example of a helicopter that does not lock in 3D space. This is the AH-1Z. And whenever you enter hovering mode, you will notice, unlike the Apache, these two numbers, which mean climb rate and altitude from the ground, respectively, uh, the climb rate does not go to zero, at least not, doesn't go there by default. If you change your collective pitch, your climb rate will also change. 
So it only locks your hovering um, in the X and the Y axes and not the Z axis. Now some helicopters like the Huey have a fifth SAS mode. Although it's not really an SAS mode, it's just essentially the Hueys, they have a co-pilot. But when you toggle it, it'll say damping if you're in the Japanese Hueys, or if you're in the American ones, it'll say co-pilot. It's the same thing. What this essentially is, is it's a hovering mode, kind of like the H1Z, where it hovers you in the X and the Y axes, but not the Z axis. And it's because it's simulating your co-pilot hovering while you aim the guns. Now, depending on if you are using an aircraft or a helicopter, you are going to have vastly different movement controls, although there are some similarities between them. Collective pitch is kind of like your airplane's throttle. It's a little different. What collective pitch is, it is the angle of the helicopter blades as they spin through the air. A higher pitch will increase the surface area of the blades on the air, and a lower pitch will lower it, so it'll be basically cutting through the air instead of beating it. There is a lot of things that happen to the helicopter physics-wise with the collective pitch, and I'll go over more of this in detail later, but for right now I'm just going to tell you how to, the controls work and how you should bind them. Now, if you are wanting to use a throttle or a collective, or if you want to use an axe for this, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click Auto Detect Axis. And I highly recommend when doing this, you like unplug any devices that may have dead zone issues because it could interfere, and to take your hands and feet off every other device. So what you're going to want to do is click Auto Detect Axis. And when you move the axis that you want to assign it to, it will automatically bind it to it. Now if you don't know what this screen is, I'll just briefly tell you what's happening here. So the green dot is the actual game input. The red dot is the actual controller input. So the red dot is mimicking my exact axis control. The green dot is what it's telling the game to do. And the reason why they're backwards is because I have invert axis on. Now, there's two ways you can do this. If you're using the throttle, you can bind it to the axis. But if you're not using a throttle, if you're, let's say, using W and S, which is very common for a lot of people who use mouse, you're going to want to put it on relative control and use W and S to increase and decrease the values. Notice when I press W and S, it doesn't do anything here. What this does is it will manually adjust your collective pitch, like so. If you look on the right side of the screen here, the collective goes down, and it goes up, and it holds that value when I let go. Now, I don't recommend having enable or disable access for something like this, but just to kind of explain what this does. Enabling an access means you have to hold down another button in order to adjust or uh, that value. And resetting it sets it to the default, which is 0%. So for this, if you're using a HOTAS, I would recommend having uh, no invert axis on, and I would not use a enabling or disabling of a axis. The rest of these is entirely up to you. Dead zone, uh, if you have some dead zone issues on your HOTAS, this will help fix them. For example, if it doesn't have a perfect zero, or if you have a Xbox controller, and you notice that it is automatically like it's moving the um, the boxes up here without you touching it. Setting a dead zone will fix that issue. Nonlinearity. The way this works is controller input is linear. Think of like a straight line. But if I set nonlinearity, what will happen is it'll now be more instead of a straight line my uh, input will be inputted in like a curve, gradually increasing. So fine tune, finer adjustments will be easier to make, but the more extreme adjustments will now be harder. I don't recommend having nonlinearity if you're using a HOTAS, and I'll explain why, but uh, 
for right now, if you're just doing throttle, you don't need your not. Uh, if you're doing collective pitch, you don't need non-linearity. Invert access is entirely up to you. What this does is when I push forward on the stick, you see that the red box goes to the left, but the green box goes to the right. If I untick that, now the green box and the red box are together. I've already explained what relative control does, but I will briefly explain what these two. I could be wrong on how this works because I don't use relative control for throttle, but the way this works is relative control sensitivity is how fast or how much the input changes when you hold down the uh, button. So if I hold down S, it drops that collective very fast. If I lower that sensitivity though, to like 10%, you will see if I try to hold the button down, it is going up very slowly. So that'll affect how much it changes when you are holding it down. But relative control step works a little differently. What happens when you're doing relative control step is if you tap the button, so I'll raise it to 100%. If you set relative control step to 50%, if you tap the button once, you tap S once, it lowers the collective by 25%. And then you'll notice it does it 25% again. It works both up and down. And the amount it does that by is different depending on how much you set the relative control to. You can see I, I halved it to 25%, and now it's going down by 20, uh, by 12.5 every time I tap it. So that's how those two things work. I don't reckon I don't recommend if you have a Hotess, I don't recommend using relative control. Use absolute control. Lastly, you have multiplier and correction. There's very few cases where you want to use correction, but there's a lot of cases where you would want to probably use multiplier. Multiplier affects how much input. Um, it basically multiplies the input by whatever number you put here. So if I set this to 100%, it's going to multiply that 100% by whatever number that is. Now for helicopters, I would not recommend messing with the multiply or the correction. But for aircraft, if you're using a HOTAS for the throttle, I actually recommend setting the multiplier to, to 1.02 and the correction to negative 1%. And the reason why is because in order to activate the brakes and the afterburner, you have to go either below 0% or above 100%. And you can't do that unless you increase the multiplier by a little bit. And um, I also had to do the correction there just because it wouldn't activate the brakes. So it's pulling back just a wee bit. It's not going to be a huge difference, but... That is something you want to keep in mind. If you're not able to activate the brakes or your war emergency power or afterburner, try doing that. But helicopters, they don't have, um, they do not have that, so you do not need to worry about that. The next ones are really easy, and it is virtually the same for helicopters and airplanes. For roll, pitch, and yaw access, this one is pretty self-explanatory. Rolling is how much your helicopter will roll to the left or right. Pitching is how much you'll pitch it forward and backwards. And yawing for helicopters is your anti-torque pedals, whereas for aircraft, it is your rudder control. Now, if you have a HOTAS and a joystick, I recommend setting this to that, obviously. Um, as for everything else, I again recommend setting non-linearity to 1. Remember, auto-detect access and find out where you want each individual thing. For pitching, you'll just have to decide whether or not you want it to be inverted or not. And yawing. This one is probably the more complicated or the more difficult one for people to decide because on a HOTAS, you're not... Everyone's going to have different options. For example, I have these paddles on the back for the throttle, and I can also twist the joystick left and right. But I prefer pedals. I feel like they give me much more control than the uh oh yeah, they give me a, l a larger range of motion and i can always i always have my feet on them so i can control them at any point even if i let go of the joystick or the throttle and then down here you'll have roll pitch and yaw sensitivity so you can see there there's the joystick i'm gonna put it in manual for a moment if i slam this joystick to the right and the left you'll notice it takes a long time for that joystick to move all the way in one direction. But if I raise it all to 100%, 
you can see it moves a lot faster. So what joystick sensitivity does is it kind of dampens your input. So it gradually increases it over time. This is ideal if you have a really, um, if you're using a controller, for example, you may not want to set it too high because it's very easy to make a minor adjustment into a big one. And this will help kind of prevent that. Um, I recommend if you want to fly like me, set everything to 100%, set non-linearity to 1, and multiplier to at least 1. And the reason for this, at least the, the multiplier one's pretty self-explanatory. Obviously you don't want to like, you want to have as much uh, of a range of input as possible. You don't want to limit yourself. You don't want to prevent yourself from going into the boundaries that you're able to go in. So if you lower the multiplier, yeah, technically you'll have a, um, a longer range of motion, but that motion is going to be cut off by a certain point. But with non-linearity, what this does, a lot of people think it's a great thing to have because they can make those fine-tuned adjustments really easy. And in some cases, that's very important. But what ends up happening is you make the, you make the easier stuff, or I guess the, the smaller stuff easier, but those larger ranges of motion are now going to be really hard to control. And I've tested it with and without non-linearity, and I'm, I'm telling you from experience, if you want to master something and have the most control over it, set your non-linearity as low as possible. I, I know that it's going to be really hard to make those fine-tuned adjustments if you're just trying to you know, nudge your helicopter or your aircraft left to right, up or down to get a to get a perfect shot off. But in the end, it's going to help you across all aspects, not just that one teeny tiny aspect. For aircraft, you'll have a couple different controls. At the top, you'll see you have another drop down box. What this does is it just affects what your mouse wheel does. I recommend setting this to none, and I will explain why in the view controls section. But if you really want to use the mouse wheel for something, you can set it to the zoom axis, you can set it to viewing in the Y axis as an up and down, or you can set it to the throttle axis. But I recommend setting it to none, and I will explain why later. Uh, this is just, that affects the sensitivity of the axis. Throttle axis, same, I already went over it. Roll, pitch, and yaw, very similar to the helicopters. Same thing with these joystick sensi uh, sensitivities. But now you have some new key bindings. You have thrust vectoring, hover height, wing sweep, brakes. Uh, you have a couple things here that are available in helicopters, but most of the stuff is unique to aircraft. I'll start off with thrust vectoring. As of right now, there's only four planes in the game that have this. That's the AV-8A, AV-8C, Yak-38, and the Yak-38M, uh, I think. They're, they're, anyways, the point is... There's not that many heli there's not that many jets that have this feature, but I will explain how they work. They are different for the Harrier and the Yak-38. The way it works on the Harrier is you'll notice I uh, can't really get the camera on it, but you'll notice these black things on the side. That is actually where the exhaust of the Harrier jet comes out of. And I have it mapped to both the paddle and the joystick, which, by the way, this is actually... I, f I just found this out right now. This is the same um, axis, just in two different locations. But anyways, if I increase the thrust vectoring for the Harrier, it moves those uh, nozzles downwards, and this will allow me to take off vertically. The Yak-38 has something similar. Uh, it works a little differently, though. I recommend, if you want to learn more about the Yak-38 and how it hovers, just look that up. But that's how that's how thrust vectoring works. Hover height. If you set your plane to hover mode with the damping controls like you can with helicopters. Oh, I guess the uh, carrier doesn't have that option. Maybe the Yak-38 does. I don't know. But it's very similar to the hover height controls in aircraft. Force feedback is not available for all joysticks. Some joysticks have a feature that allow them to apply force to your hand with the more you push them to kind of simulate your aircraft's control surfaces running into a lot of um, resistance. And this obviously affects how strong that force feedback is. 
For aircraft, we now go into the mechanization controls. Uh, by the way, for helicopters and aircraft, they have essentially the same mechanization controls, except uh, because helicopters don't have that many, they kind of crammed them here in the miscellaneous section. But yeah, they work the same for both helicopters and planes. Ignite boosters is only available for certain aircraft. Um, some jets have them, like the A-4B. Some planes have them. Um, what this is, is it's like a, it is a one-time use disposable rocket on usually the wings and it helps with taking off faster but you can for most planes keep them and then use them in like a dogfight or something uh, which is kind of cool but uh, I don't recommend it because a lot of times the boosters are blocking landing gear or they're blocking guns but it is something you can do wing sweep is something that is only available to jets that have variable wing sweep and um I believe jets like the F-8 uh, Crusader. I haven't used the F-8, so I can't say for certain. But this just affects the wing sweep. I'm sure if you have these jets, you probably already know how that feature works by uh, by now. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on it because I don't. I haven't really used it that much. Toggle flaps is the same as flaps up and down, um, except it just... Uh, what it does is it just cycles through the different flap options instead of just moving them up or moving them down. I don't recommend it because I like to know where my flaps are without having to look at them or having to memorize like how many how many times I've toggled it. So you can see lowering the flaps, what it does is it lowers those flaps um, towards the middle of the airplane. Those aren't ailerons or anything, those are flaps. And if you don't know how flaps work, um, basically what they do is they give you more uh, lift but it can come at a couple costs, like obviously you're going to lose a lot of speed. Um, they can break off in some cases, which can cause your plane to crash or lose um, some pretty important components. You also have toggle landing gear, that's pretty uh, self-explanatory. Air brake, this little thing right here. It's different on every airplane, but air brakes are a good way to slow down and reduce your speed. You have drag chute, which is kind of like ignite boosters, except the opposite. It's when you're landing, you can press that button to kind of activate it, and uh, it'll open up a parachute behind you and slow you and help slow you down. Left brake and right brake. Now this is something that should be available to helicopters, but isn't right now. What this does, and I don't know if the Phantom has it. Let's find it. Okay, it does. Cool. So what this does is it activates the brake on the landing gear. That's the right brake, and this should be the left brake. Now, it's not that strong for some reason. I don't know why. I don't even know if it's working or not, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But anyways, for some, that's how it's supposed to work. Um, I have it set to these pedals, but it didn't seem to be doing anything. And I believe that is it. Now, if you're wanting to use my control scheme, the way I have most of this set up, obviously the axes are pretty self-explanatory. But all the mechanization controls here, you'll notice that they're all in a combination of button 9 and these buttons on the hat switch, which are buttons 13, 14, 15, and 16. And that is just to keep things simple for me. So I hold down 9, and I believe up is flaps up, down is flaps down, left and right are toggle gear and toggle air brake. And I have a couple other things like drag chute and ignite boosters. Um, they're still part of the uh, the D-pad, but as you can see now, they're buttons 12, respectively. For helicopters, we have similar things. We have toggle flaps, flaps up and down, toggle gear. Although, I will say, I don't know any helicopters that have flaps, so you don't really need these at all. But if you want to, you can use toggle flaps. You might find a helicopter that uses it, but I have not found one yet. Toggle gear is pretty important for some helicopters, but it's really not that necessary. And that's really it. Another thing that you will probably want is toggling engine. For aircraft, if you're playing in sim, your engine will always be off. Helicopters, though, the engine is always on. So you don't really need it for helicopters, although you can if you want to. If your engine's dying or losing oil, turning your engine off and landing at an airfield can prevent you from dying, quote-unquote, or your helicopter reaching a point where it cannot be repaired anymore. 
So that is one instance where you'd probably want to turn your helicopter engine off. But you will definitely want that key binding for aircraft. As for the rest of these, I'm not going to go over them. I will tell you, if you want to mess around with these, you need to first bind engine controls mode, and you need to activate that. And what that will do is it'll switch it from an automatic controlling of all these to a manual, and that's when you can fiddle around and mess with all that stuff. In the next video, I'll be going over the weaponry for both aircraft and helicopters.